So as Donna told you, the theme, of course, is grateful. Uh, everything full, but grateful particularly. And uh, the title today, Grateful for What I Have. And immediately that brings ideas of great blessings that we've had, but there are a few problems with the idea of having. Um, possession, ownership, uh, there are some problems. Um, I think of a couple of problems, and just to give you an idea of where I'm thinking, what, what I'm thinking, there was a... Um, in Greek mythology, no, um, uh, yeah, you can't see my head, huh? Okay, I hope we haven't damaged that. <laughs> okay, so in Greek mythology, oh, this is a quiz too. This is a quiz. Just speak out the uh, the answer as soon as you know it. Uh, both online and here in person. There was a great king who uh, went to one of the mythological gods, um, the god of wine, vegetation, fertility, festivity, ritual madness, religious ecstasy, and theater. That's quite a handful or a mouthful. So this king went to Dionysus. Anybody know the king yet? Dionysus, the god, the Greek god. And um, the Greek god had been appreciative of something that this king had done. And so he asked, what would you like? And the king said, I would like whatever I touch to turn to gold. Oh, there we go. You got it. And you know the story, how it didn't work so well. King Midas was so set on having everything in gold. I've heard about other people that think that way, but um, everything in gold. And so the petals and the flowers were gold, but they were brittle and they lost all of their scent. And so the roses that were there were no longer the same. He even got to the point where he touched his daughter and his daughter turned to gold. Having has its problems. When we go greedily after something, the having gets contorted. It's something different than the blessing that it really is. And then there was, uh, now we're at second part of the quiz. There was um, this woman who with her husband uh, stole $5 billion from their country. And after they had been deposed, you're going to get it right away, I know. They went into the lockers where this couple had stored their things and found 3,000 pairs of shoes. Who, who, who's, who's got it? Imelda Marcos, of course. Again, an example of how having and wanting to have and wanting to have it all and more than anybody could use brought them to loss of what having really is all about. And then one more. A couple of characters were tunneling in search of treasure. And when it seems like they were there and it was within sight, one of the characters, and you're going to have to get this one, I'll try to imitate the character. It's mine, you understand? Mine, mine, mine. Get back in there. Down, down, down. Go, go, go. Mine, mine, mine. Who got it? Daffy Duck and Bugs Bunny. Mine, mine, mine. The dark side of having. 
But let's turn from that and turn to the light side, the bright side of, of having. Though there are those problems, the key spiritual truth that I came up with for today is grateful to my source and its unlimited supply. I hold all things lightly, knowing that all things work together for good. I want to say that again. I like that. Grateful to my source and its unlimited supply, I hold all things lightly, knowing that all things work together for good. I want today to share with you truth as I know it. It might be a little bit different than you, but please bear with me and just let me share truth as I know it. Because I think it relates to this idea of grateful for what I have. The first truth statement that I would make is that we are spiritual beings having a physical experience. We are physical beings having a, no, we're spiritual beings having a physical existence. Our existence doesn't begin with birth, doesn't end with physical death. Our existence here in this world is when we have taken on a particular form. And that particular form doesn't end with death. Nor did it begin with birth, because there may have been some other form or there may be, and we sometimes get glimpses of it kind of in the, in the distance, but we don't really know. We don't really see the big picture. But it's my belief that this is so. I don't start on October 5th, 1946, when I was born, and I won't stop when I die. I thought it's going to be, I'm going to be 130, but then I'm a little crazy. Uh, and that's a ways away yet. But that won't be the end of it. Matter of fact, I am only seeing a very, very small fraction of all that it is. And I'm seeing a small fraction of who I am. And I can't see outside of this little tunnel here right now. But I do know that my physical form here on this earth is only a part of it and that I have so much more waiting for me. The material possessions that I have, my motorcycle, my bicycles, uh, our home are temporal. They belong to this little slice of being but there is so much more. And so we can be grateful for what we have when we take the perspective that what we have here is something we have just for a short period of time. It's not to be focused on to the exclusion of our consciousness, which goes beyond the time when we are here. As best we can, we want to invest in treasures that transcend life as we know it, even though we don't know exactly how it's going to look. We can start that. We can start that awareness. We can start that uh, enlightenment. We can start that uh, ability to be in consciousness more than just the confines of this life. So I put it this way. Grateful for what I have, because we still do have these material things, but when we see the big picture, we take them lightly. Grateful for what I have. I take those things lightly. Truth number two. Everything begins with source. Some of you may use source with a capital S 
as how you refer to the divine or God. It's a very useful perspective because everything emanates from source, us included. So there are three words that kind of go together, two others that go with source. They are source, substance, and supply. When we understand these, we have a better perspective on being grateful for who, what we have. Source, everything comes, all the things are created from the divine energy that is source. We're a part of that source. Everything comes from a source. And everything that we see in form comes from the substance that goes with that source. I really like the way Wallace Waddles puts it. Wallace wrote The uh, Science of Getting Rich, kind of a funny title, but there's a lot of spiritual truth there. And he puts it this way when he talks about substance. There is a thinking stuff from which all things are made and which in its original state permeates, penetrates, and fills the inner spaces of the universe. And then he goes on to say, a thought in this substance produces the thing that is imagined by the thought. What we have in this world is produced by thought, by giving our attention, our mind, even though we don't know it, to that divine substance from which everything comes. So of that truth, I say, with regard to what we have and being grateful for what we have, we are grateful for the source from which we come, for the substance that makes all of the things that we have in our lives physically, and for the supply. The supply is unlimited. Divine supply doesn't have limits. We ask for only a little bit or we don't ask at all. But the wealth in every mind, the cattle on a thousand hills, I remember a song when I was a youngster that talked about that. And more, we can't even imagine it, the universe being as large as it is. So I say about this truth, we are grateful for what we have, grateful for the source, the substance and the supply that is available to us. Lao Tzu said something that sounds a whole lot like what I've just been talking about. Be content with what you have. Rejoice in the way things are when you realize there is nothing lacking. The whole world belongs to you. Truth number three, this one I really like. It's all good. I believe this to the very core of my being. I call it, I've kind of adopted a word, omnibeneficence, all good. So when you have the perspective of it's all good, of course you're gonna say, I have, we're using this word have, and we're grateful for what we have. I have a good life. I had a great time. That's there. But everything means that you may be grateful when you say, I, I'm having a bad day. I had a cold. I have COVID. Can you be grateful in all of those things? Well, you can if you come from the perspective of everything is good. That source, that substance, that supply, there's not a thing in it that is not good. 
we don't see the big picture. So we sometimes look at what's there and we think, oh my, that's awful. Or we get afraid because we don't see the big picture. I know that you've had the experience of having something happen that you really disliked or was terrible or felt painful. And two years later, you were grateful for it because you see more of the picture. I suspect that we don't see the big picture that can extend beyond the life that we have here in form. But it's my belief that everything does work together for good. And I put that in the context of being grateful for what we have with this way. Everything works together for good. So for everything I have, good or bad, positive or negative, painful or exhilarating, I am grateful. That takes some work. But now I get to the time when we always say, how do I do that? And I thought maybe there could be a list of things that I would give you, but no. I'm going to give you one thing. There's an interesting phrase that has cropped up in the world situation. It's called humanitarian pause. Of course, you know it relates to the war between Israel and Hamas. The desire to have a pause. So I'm going to suggest that what will help us with regard to these truths and help us with regard to being grateful for what we have to be a gratitude pause. A gratitude pause. Whenever it comes to you, whatever the situation, pause. There's power in it. And give gratitude. Even though maybe at first it doesn't feel like it. For the blessings, the little ones, the big ones, for the people in your lives, for all that you have in terms of material things, and all that you have in terms of your life situation, whether you label it good or bad, positive or negative. Let me say that key spiritual truth once more. Grateful to source, and it's unlimited supply, I hold things lightly, knowing that all things work together for good. Remember those characters, King Midas? What could King Midas have asked for that would reach beyond the temporal material thing in this world? You don't have to answer the question, but just open your mind. King Midas could have asked for something different, not something of form that elevated him, but something that enriched him. What about Imelda Marcos and her husband, of course, who made off with $5 million? Might they just possibly have thought of leaving a legacy for the Philippines that would be for the benefit of all. And what about Daffy Duck and Bugs Bunny? Maybe they could have sat down and shared that treasure. Might not have made such a good cartoon, but I like the end of that story. Grateful to source and its unlimited supply, I hold all things lightly, knowing that all things work together for good. And so it is.